Today on Let's Fish TV, I'm joined by my good friend Justin. We're in South Florida targeting a really rare species called clown knife fish. Guys, we're going to be using Lowrance Active Target 2. We've been looking at those fish, scoping them around. I promise you we're going to have a fun day. Yes, sir. And I promise you, you don't want to turn this TV off. You probably need to hit record and take your notepad out. You're about to learn a few things. Let's Fish TV is on the air right now. That's a big one right there. <laughs> it's time for the only program that brings you real-time fishing reports from the Southeast region every week. You ever caught a fish that big? No. <laughs> Got it. Now the day. Ooh. There you go. Another redfish. Got, Got him it. now. That's what Let's Fish TV is all about right there, guys. Welcome to Let's Fish TV. I'm your host, Andrew Upshaw, and I'm joined by my good friend, Justin Jones. We're in South Florida at Lake Ida. Lake Ida is a really small lake just south of West Palm. It is an awesome place. Today, we're gonna be targeting clown knife fish, peacock bass, and largemouth bass. We're going for the trifecta today. We're using a couple of different techniques to catch them, including our Lowrance Active Target 2. We'll also have this week's fishing report from your local region from our insider reporters. In the meantime, we're gonna get the boat launched, get everything set up. We'll toss it back to the studio for your weekend planner. Hi everybody, these salooner tables are indicating fair game fish activity Saturday and good on Sunday. Peak daytime hours begin around 9.45 Saturday and 10.34 Sunday morning. The best night fishing will begin at 10.09 on Saturday and 10.58 Sunday evening. Depending on your location, the sun will rise around 6.53 and set around 8.03. And evenings will have a moon that is 90% visible. Make sure to keep up with the latest fishing adventures and tips from Let's Fish TV by joining us on Facebook, Instagram pages, and by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Also, don't forget Andrew's doing an academy tour. So look to our social media pages to see when and where he will be next. Today on Lake Ida, I'm here with Justin. We're gonna be going after clown knife fish and some peacock bass and maybe throw a largemouth in or two. But the weather is perfect. It normally is perfect down here. Water temperature is 72 to 75 degrees. We're coming off a cold front, but we're in a warming trend, which a lot of times has those fish ready to bite. I have a feeling we're gonna catch a lot of fish today. I can't wait to showcase this lake. Lake Ida yep. is gonna be on fire today. Let's see what happens next. That one's like near the top. Yeah, they breathe air, so they'll come up. So if you see one- Oh, I saw it, yeah, I saw they don't, it. They don't go like over here or over there. They go up and straight down, so you can actually catch that fish just by seeing them roll. Oh, here they are right here. They're close. They will eat it on the fall too. They do like a fall. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Oh, he's got, he's tracking it. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, dude. Oh yeah, dude. Oh, Woo, look at that <laughs> ugly thing. There yes. we go. Heck yeah. It was like almost first cast. <laughs> I ain't never caught nothing like that. Heck yeah. That's what dude, I'm you talking could do about. That all day here. No way. All day. No way. Let's get this fish back. I'm gonna hold this thing up. This is, <laughs> I have never in my life. All right, caught so this how fish. you handle them, because they have teeth, is you wanna go just under the gill plate right here. Oh, get them just right here and hold them like that. And then you can remove your hooks. Be careful though, because if they shake their head, their, their gills can still cut you. You don't want to stick your finger in there too deep. Now go ahead and hold it up. I don't have to hold it. <laughs> Look at that thing. That's wild. That's what an awesome fish. fish. From Southeast Asia. That's crazy. Only in Florida. I, I've never seen them anywhere else. Florida's the only place that has them except for where they're from. All right, let's get this fish back. We're gonna talk about where we're at and what we're catching. We hadn't been here five minutes and we caught the fish that we were actually Target targeting. Species. You know, we were going after that clown knife fish. It's Southeast Asia. It was imported here to Lake Ida and a couple other lakes here in Florida with my good buddy, Justin. And, you know, we were targeting that fish, but you told me, you know, we might not catch one because there's so many different species in this lake. Yeah, you never know what you're gonna catch. You can catch peacocks, largemouth, stripers, snakeheads, clown knife fish, cichlids, crappie, all kinds of stuff. It is truly a multi-species lake. You know, that was one thing about venturing to Florida this year. I really wanted to bring y'all the experience of what it, it's like down here. You know, it's not all just 
big bass and, and stuff like that. There's so many other species you can catch and that's what I really wanted to exploit on this particular trip. Today on Let's Fish TV, we're gonna be trying to catch as many species as we can. We've already knocked one off the list. I have a feeling we're gonna knock a bunch more off. I'm sure we will. We're gonna talk about everything that this place has to offer here in just a little while. I'm gonna get back to fishing. I wanna catch me another clown knife fish, maybe a big peacock bass. That'd oh, be yeah. awesome. Yeah. All right, we'll see y'all here in a second. Hey y'all, it's Captain D here with your Carolinas Report. This week brought to you by Crazy Sister Marina. And I'll tell you what, my friends over there, they love making sure that you have a good time and live like a local when you're in town. We got that new bait and tackle shop downstairs. Everything you need, full lineup of tackle and all the live bait that'll put you on some success here. CrazySystemMarina.com, you can find all the information for everything we offer right here. We're gonna talk freshwater, and I love this time of the year, heading to the upstate of South Carolina, Lake Joe Cassie, one of the most beautiful lakes around. And this time of the year, the rainbow trout start to stack up. You wanna have a lot of success. You get out there, get around that dam, get some spoons deep, get them way deep. Find those fish with live scope and, or, or any of your live forward facing sonars out there shouldn't have any trouble finding those fish but if you can find those fish right now get those spoons right down there to them you're going to have a lot of success and also let's talk about watery river you know this time of the year again those striped bass stack up in the watery river just below the dam if you have a boat that you can get up there you can have a lot of success but you got to be safe be very careful that river is crazy at times but if we haven't had much rain, there's not a lot of water flowing. It's safe, you can get up there, find those back whirls, find every little break in that water, and you're gonna find some big stripers this time of the year in the Watery River. Hey, this has been your Carolinas Report brought to you by Crazy Sister Marina. Remember, fish smarter, not harder, and keep your chaos organized. Yeah, I don't. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's a really big one. Oh. That's a good one. Oh, shoot. There we go. Now that is Heck a way yeah. better one there. Golly. That's what's up. That's an awesome fish right there. Dang, that's like back-to-back -back cast. <laughs> I was back there and I just stood up to go make one more cast real quick. And Got he catches another one. that one. First cast down there. Wow. Awesome, awesome fish. Back-to-back -back catches clown knife fish. You know, Coming into the today, I'm not gonna lie, I was talking to Matt Pangrite from Bass Talk Live and he actually introduced us. Yep. And he's one of the reporters on our show. He's our Oklahoma reporter. And he was telling me about all this, these big fish that you catch, these clown knife fish. And I've never ever targeted them. I've caught a fish that's really similar to that down in the Amazon. Mm -hmm. I actually shot a show there a couple years ago. And when he told me about this, I was like, you know what? That would be probably the most unique show that we've ever done on Let's Fish TV. And yeah. I couldn't help, I, I had to do it. You know, it was one of those kind of things. But you know, the bait selection on this, you were telling me that it's a forward facing sonar kind of thing. You catch them using forward facing sonar and it makes it immensely easier. Oh, way easier. And there's a lot of different baits that you can use to target them, whether mm -hmm. it be like a Damiki style rig, yep. like a baby Z2 or even a Z2. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, a drop shot. Uh, sometimes a drop shot, but the bait that we're using today is actually a Salmo, a Salmo rail shad. And it is just a super unique bait. And, and honestly, I've started adapting it to using with forward facing sonar like Active Target 2. And it makes it so easy. It's a really heavy bait. It sinks and it vibrates through the water. And the one thing I will say, if you're trying to target clown knife fish, you gotta upgrade your hooks. I actually went to a, a size bigger. I went to a size six hook. It came with yeah. a size eight. They will bend them out. And, and I definitely can see that whenever I hooked on that last one. It it's just, like hooking a wall. Yeah, it is. It was exactly <laughs> like that. It, it is a really unique fish. So if you get in this area, you need to come check out Justin's Guide Service. You can go through Rowan Mark Marina there yep. at Lake Okeechobee, yep. and he will hook you up. I, I cannot wait to catch another one. We doubled up already, but we do have to catch another species today. We've yeah, we got to somehow try to, to find a, a peacock or, or something like that. We've got a huge school of those clown knife fish yeah. so we're gonna get back to it i have a feeling next cast will probably be a fish <laughs> but we're gonna get to it and we'll see you here in a second let's fish tv is proudly backed by mercury go boldly Lorenz, the ultimate fishing system gulf shores and orange beach tourism let's fish on alabama's beaches motor guides tour pro with gps anchor powered by passion deep water oh there's one there's one 
What is this? I don't know. Oh, it's a peacock. It's a peacock. I'm not even really hearing any fish blow up, you know? No. Might have to go back to that deep water. Oh, there's one. There's one. What is this? I don't know. Oh, it's a peacock. It's a peacock. We got us a peacock. Yeah. There we oh, go. it's a good one, too. Heck, yeah. Whew. Dude, he smashed Smoked that it. real shad. Oh, my gosh. Oh, they are very strong. They're like smallmouth. They do oh, not yeah. give up. Heck, yeah. Look at that thing. That thing is beautiful. You're like, what is this? I know, dude. He got, just crushed it. What a nice fish. Just had to slide out from under that bridge so you could see everything that was going on. Throwing that Salmo rail shad. Absolutely clobbered that thing. This is a really nice peacock yeah. to this area. Yeah. Um, nice it just long. goes to show you what this area has to offer. I mean, we've caught clown knife fish and now Pe a peacock. Peacock, yep. And it's just a lot of fun. I mean, it, that's what it's all about. You know, I wanted to have a show that was different than all the others. Yeah, it's cool. And so when, when you look at baits, what are a few baits that you like to throw around here? Uh, a jerk bait, these, these guys love a jerk bait. Anything vibrating fast, they're, they're a lot like smallmouth. So anything bright colored, shiny, fast, uh, spinner baits, top water. They love a Zara Spook or a prop bait. Uh, they love a crankbait and a rattle trap. You can catch them on almost anything that you throw for a large mouth. Hey y'all, this is my favorite part of the show, the Alabama, Mississippi, and Georgia Coastal Fishing Report. This segment is brought to you by me, Captain Patrick Garmison. My company is Ugly Fishing. You can visit my website at uglyfishing.com got links to all of our social media platforms there. Our fishing around here has been an ups and downs. We've had an extremely large amount of wind, uh, which is typical for springtime, but we've had a lot of winds out of the westerly direction, which generally muddies up Mobile Bay. Uh, whenever we've been able to get out and get out into the Gulf, we've been able to target sheephead and that bite's still going on good. Uh, but it is on the downward trend now. I would expect that to, uh, to be pretty much done and over with in the next couple of weeks of April. All right, in the Mississippi area, the water temperatures got up around 70 degrees, and he said the marsh is really starting to heat up with the speckled trout action. He said the shrimp are really not showing up, so he said he's been focusing on long and big points. And, and he said when you do find the speckled trout, there, there's a great abundance of them. In the Georgia area, the water temperature is in the lower 60s. Many of the speckled trout remain in the deeper bends of the creeks, yet some are already being caught out near the entrance of the Savannah River around the jetties. So he said there's still some transition going on there. He said the redfish are being caught in the creeks and in the river entrances, and he's also seeing some flounder. So I appreciate y'all tuning into this report. Uh, keep in mind with my friends from the Speckled Truth saying that's keep what you need and leave the rest. God bless, guys. Oh, large mouth, that's what I'm talking about. There we go. God, thing is so dark. Yeah, they, he lives under here. He's, he's a resident of this place. That's awesome. Yeah. Not a bad little large mouth. No, there's a ton of them in here in the side. They're all shad eaters. You can see how full he is. Yeah. Man, look at that. I'll, I'll grab that one. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that little fish there. There we go. There we go. Got him. Oh, oh my that's, God. What you, is that? That's a fish, dude. That's a good fish. That's a fish. It's a something big. I can tell you that. Take your time, take your time. Those are little bitty hooks. It's, it's got to be a peacock. Yep. Yep. Oh, it's a good peacock, dude. That's a good peacock. Hey. Yes. Man. That dude, crushed it. That Dang. is a good peacock. That's what I'm talking about. All right, let me try Dang. and get these hooks out of here. That is a good peacock. We're going to slide on out of here real quick. Yeah. Get some better lighting. Oh. so strong. 
for their Check size. Check that out. What a nice fish. Just taking that Salmo rail shad and going to work on them. It is easily one of the best forward facing sonar baits that you can get. I mean, look at the beautiful colors. And, and like you're saying, it's because the water's cold, you're not seeing the defined They're lines. They're a little bit more muted than normal, but a really, really nice fish. I mean, that was one of those really good ones. It wasn't a 20 pound or anything like yeah. that, but a really solid fish. It, it's unreal the difference in the bite whenever you're talking about the the knife fish in comparison to the peacocks yeah. and even to the largemouth. The largemouth just kind of, you kinda know, kind of get gummy, soft. but that fish right there just absolutely obliterated it. But it's all about having the right equipment. You know, mm -hmm. having a fast gear ratio reel, being able to catch up with those fish, but more importantly, paying attention to your electronics and floating that bait. You know, this is a heavy bait. I mean, it's around a half ounce that rail shad is. Yeah. But the reality is, is if you make really long casts, you can't float it. So you've got to be close enough proximity yeah. to float that bait and keep it above their heads and be able to catch that fish. And that's a unique thing about the rail shad, that split ring actually works back and forth and it causes the bait to rock in the water and also vibrate. But the cool thing is, is when you get it more vertical, that split ring goes to the top and it balances the bait out. So it looks like a bait fish sitting right above their head. Yep. It's super unique. And when you're using forward facing sonar, in my opinion, there's not a better bait than that rail shad. But guys, we're gonna get back to it. I wanna catch at least one more knife fish if we can. Yeah. And we'll see if Give we can. Shot. Yeah, let's see what we can do. Let's yeah. go. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Have fun out there. Powerful. Total boat control. Balls out. Made in the USA. Heavy duty mounts for your fish finders. Rely on. Challenge your limits. Yes, there we and go. he got a choke. That's what I'm talking He's about. He's got a choke, dude. Holy cow. Look at that. That's a big one. Oh, that is yeah. a good one. That's a good one. Yes, there we and go. he got it choked. That's what I'm talking He's about. He's got it choked, dude. Holy cow. Look at that. That's wild. That's awesome, man. That's what I'm talking about. That's so crazy. He knocked the he knocked slack in the line. Right? Like two foot of slack. He hit it so hard. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. I mean, they're just so pretty. It's probably you one of the see, prettier You see fish. these marks on them? Uh-huh. So I think that they hurt each other. Really? I think they nip at each other because a lot of them have these marks where they look like they're scratched up, like they're like they're fighting or something. Mm -hmm. Man, it's just that the way its fin works, it's just like always doing this, like cooling like a snake almost. Yeah, they're very eel-like. They're pretty that much just crazy. like an eel. That's they're like a freshwater. So Man, that was an awesome catch. But you know, the, the really unique thing is that you just can't go down the bank and target these fish, no, can you? No, no, they are suspended off the bank. They are roaming. You know, we're fishing structure today. We're fishing brush piles and really, unfortunately, some trash in the water. <laughs> yeah. And just finding these little places that these fish are schooled up on. But I can't stress the importance of Active Target 2. You know, Lawrence Active Target 2 just gives you so many different options. You know, you can target these fish with swim baits uh, that Salmo rail shad, you were throwing a Demiki rig Demiki there. Rig, yep. You know, it doesn't really matter as long as you can see the bait, see the fish, and see how it reacts. You know, mm -hmm. it hasn't been the easiest day today, no. but on average, you say you catch anywhere between 10 and 15 a day. Uh, uh, of those a day. And yeah. then plus, you get the bonus of the largemouth and the peacocks yep. and stuff like that. Overall, this has been an unreal day, dude. <laughs> it's, been I, good. it's probably one of my favorite shows I've ever shot. That's awesome because it is such a unique fish that I've never caught before. Yeah. And we both landed some really, really some nice, nice ones. ones. Yeah, really so, quality fish. How can people get a hold of you? How can they find you? So I work for Roland Martin Marina, so you can look up their uh, website online and they have all the guide info. You can request me through them. My phone number is 772-475-1992. And my Instagram is C-A-P-T period Justin Jones. And you can contact me through all that stuff. I'm working on my official website right now. Yeah, so if y'all want the trip of a lifetime, something that's different, and, I, and I'm saying like really different, come check him out. I promise you guys, it will be absolutely worth it. You'll get to catch a fish 
that you might not even know of a lifetime. Yeah. You know, that is, it, I never even knew about this fish until just about a week ago. <laughs> and when I saw it, I was like, I have to catch that thing. Like it is, just, for whatever reason, I was like, I just gotta go catch it. Yeah. But without active target, you know, you get a lot of flack sometimes uh, for using forward facing sonar and things. Yeah. But when it comes to targeting a fish like that, you gotta have it. You pretty much do these so, days for sure. You know, otherwise you're gonna be out here using live bait and it's just so much more fun to be able to just catch them randomly using that active yeah. target. So, so much more engaging. Yeah, that is a good one there. That you're on. Did he turn? Oh, Got he turned. Him. Got him. There we go. Oh, that was awesome. Dude, this is a good one. Heck yeah. Oh yeah, that is a big one. Oh, 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 oh. oh got him. <laughs> yes. Dang. Yes. That's great. That was sick. Get out of there. There we go. Wow. I mean, guys, that's what you come <laughs> to South Florida for. Right there on that fish, is the perfect reason as to why you need active target too. Wow, and dude, that was awesome, that was man. Awesome, Good dude. job, dude. So guys, I'll see y'all here in just a second. We're gonna be talking about the baits and everything we use to catch them here, West Palm Beach. All right, we'll see you in a second. our latest episode or catch up on past episodes on our website at letsfishtv.com be sure to hit the subscribe button on our youtube channel like us on facebook and download the free waypoint tv app to get all the latest episodes every week on your phone tablet computer or smart tv Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Lake Hartwell Country. Catch the feeling. Lose, feel the difference. Strike King, tie one on. And by Glacier Outdoor, outdoors since 1982. Here's today's Right Stuff presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. This week for your Academy Right Stuff, we're talking about how we caught them at Lake Ida. You know, there was one bait that kind of stood out more than others, and that was the Salmo Rail Shad. You know, I get a lot of questions, why do you throw a rail shad, and how do you fish it? And why is it called a rail shad? Well, there's actually a rail sitting on top of this. Your split ring goes back and forth. Whenever you're reeling the bait, the split ring is going to go to the front, causing the bait to vibrate as you reel it through the water column. Once you get it closer to the boat and more vertical, the split ring slides to the top rail and it actually will sit that bait horizontal. One thing I did this week is I upsized the hooks. I went to a size six on the front and the back and I used a red treble on the front that really helped key in those fish. 15 pound line, this is Strike King fluorocarbon, Contra fluorocarbon, a Team Lose Custom Pro Magnum Hammer Rod. It's a 7.3, but it has a lot of tip. But I'm going to tell you guys, the reel that I've been using this year, this is a Team Loose Pro TI. This is a completely redesigned reel that we have. It has all of the bells and whistles, but the one thing I really like about it, it has beefed up gears inside. So when you do hook a big fish, you're not going to have the reel seize up. You can use braided line, you can use fluorocarbon, you use all the different types of line. But guys, I've thoroughly enjoyed my trip today on Lake Ida. I hope you get a chance to come check out Justin's guide service. We're going after clown knife fish. I mean, who in the world has ever done that? I know I can say I have now, and hopefully you get a chance to. But guys, until next time, I'll see you on the water.